Alrighty. Hello, every dang morning, peoples. Uh, hopefully all is going pretty darn well on your end. Uh, so yeah, I know, I know. I haven't done this or Cerebo in a while. I apologize. I know, it's been over like a friggin' week. I, hell, I think it's been like three weeks for XDiv. I know, I'm continuing it on. We're getting there. Uh, but anyway, uh, so let's see here. First of all, I should probably double check to make sure that it's all running right. Because let's be honest, so often times it does not. And on those days, you know, there's general sadness to cheat. Uh, but yeah, you know what? Twitch cracks me up. Every time that I uh, turn this thing on, it's like, yes, five people have instantly arrived. And then the moment that it pulls up, it's like, nope, nobody's here. We lied. I'm sorry. We just decided to give you a different number entirely. Uh, but alright, so. Yeah, it does seem like uh, video's coming through all right. Uh, seems like everything's functioning, so let's go ahead and do this thing. Now, last time, yeah, stuff was not going so hot. We ended up feeding, like, I think, what was it, like 30-something rookies <laughs> to the fire. Um, had a whole bunch of random dudes here. I never even bothered to name all these. I'm, I'm just going to leave them for now until anyone actually manages to survive a mission. And then we'll bother renaming all of them again because our casualty rates have been absurd. Now, sending a bunch of planes out on this thing. Uh, doesn't seem like anyone's going to be able to catch up to it, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, we only have uh, we only have the two attack planes left at the nest at the moment. Uh, that thing's probably just doing a whole bombing run there. Uh, I'm hoping that's all it's doing. So anyway, we'll find out later. I definitely need something. That's the thing. I, I need to down a couple of these at least. So, the thing is, at this point we need planes. We're very, um... We're basically running a bunch of outdated planes at this point, and... Well, shooting anything down seems to be a bit of a tall order. The whole rookie suicide strategy over here at the fort, that doesn't seem to be working out too well. Hello there, Mr. Buckle. How's it going? I don't know if it's Buckhell or Buckle. I, I, I somehow like the pronunciation of buckle. I don't know. It, it feels interesting. So we should have payday any day here now. Uh, hopefully, you know, deal with this whole dire situation. Uh, surprisingly, we're still going 175k positive, despite all of the setbacks. As a whiny dog over here yawns. Alright, production of incendiaries is finished. Oh, you wish. You wish you were finished. You're never finished building those. Uh, okay, so first of all, actually, how are we doing vehicle-wise? we have any of the hunters left? You know, we've got four hunters. I don't think we can build a... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Can we build a tank? Where is this? Hopefully this is better organized than later versions. Um, it's, it's sometimes a little bit hard to kind of figure out where stuff is, having them in a uh, in like an alphabetical list. Which they currently... Wait, are they? No. Having them in an alphabetical list might potentially help, but I don't know. Uh, bear in mind, this isn't actually the latest version of the mod anymore. Uh, there was another one that came out, but I would have had to completely restart the run, so yeah. Onwards, upwards and onwards and all that kind of thing. Ooh. Suddenly the music is actually back. Actually, let's go ahead and turn that music down. Wham. Because yeah, I like having other music off in the background of this. Uh, this game's music, it's its uh, pretty decent. It's pretty alright, definitely fits the mood pretty well. I just like having other games' music off in the background. Uh, so there's that. Now, okay. But yeah, if, you, if you've if you never played XDiv, the long story short of it is, like, it, it's like old XCOM, like the old XCOM from way back in the day. Uh, but it's uh, it essentially... Like, it, it takes a lot of the newer features that you'd probably expect, things like uh, cover and all that. Um, not to mention a lot of um, just interesting weapon choices and things like that. And X Division comes in and it just basically takes all of that up to 11. So it's it's kind of funny because it's a weird place where this game fits in. Uh, you know what, we can actually make a few more of these and I think I am going to. No free hangar slots. Okay, so I'm just going to make another one then, uh, just because... If we can't have good planes, we might as well at least have a lot of them. Okay, so we've only got three hangers here. We've got the Exusia, which unfortunately was a little bit of a donor last time. Elenium okay, missile, that's fine. Let's see, there's a sci-fi weapon in that game, giant robot. Ah, uh, yes. So with the giant robot T-Rex, 
that's something that I that I recently found out is apparently going to be looked forward to pretty soon. Well, I assume soon. Uh, this game basically takes face it takes place in phases. So on each side of the game, like your your each side is trying to research. So you've got the invaders that are trying to research stuff. You've got your guys that every time you try to capture somebody or whatever else, they're researching stuff. So currently I'm at what is apparently somewhere between Phase 2 and Phase 3, apparently. Not super positive on that. Uh, but the way that it goes is just, uh, yeah, every time they reach another phase, they get all kinds of new fancy crap. So, like, at this point, uh, if uh, have you ever played the original XCOM, like any of the other XCOMs, by chance? Uh, cause this, this might make a bit more sense. Uh, because specifically, uh, there's uh, the, the Chrysalids, uh, which in this one are called Reapers. It's basically the same thing, but at this point, they've gotten advanced to the point where they're basically Terminators. They can do the exact same thing, plus fire freaking like, lightning bolts of people, plus come in with force fields and things. <laughs> like, it's just, you have all of these, uh, uh, let's see, like mechs, giant robots, like front mission series, yeah. So, funnily enough, there's actually s direct copies of some of the mechs from Mech Warrior in this. That, I know for sure. And, um, basically, this is blind, but... That's been my long-term goal here, to try and unlock those mechs as soon as possible. Uh, so I know I've already gotten alien electronics, I've gotten all kinds of different alloys and things, so I'm assuming it's somewhere off on the horizon. We're probably going to have to fight some of those mechs in order to be able to get the right research to make those happen. But I know somebody that was previously mentioning being around this phase in the game, they're like, yeah, I found some giant robot T-Rex that comes back to life every time I kill it, and they're like, yeah, no, that's... That's just there. <laughs> it's like, oh crap. That doesn't sound fun. So, alright. Anyway, so I should probably get to what I was trying to do here, huh? So first of all, uh, explosives and melees. No, not those ones. Those ones. I need as many shock grenades as I can get, because them things actually held up really well last time. So the Asarius, uh, that'll be done in six hours ago, whatever. I can dedicate five people to these shock grenades. Uh, they're taking alloys, unfortunately. They're taking alloys in Millennium, which I can't necessarily sacrifice a lot of, but still, the more stuff that's captured, the more potential research we have going on. So I'm going to lay off the incendiaries for now, because I... Sorry for going back and forth on the menus here. I know it's got to be annoying to look at. Let's see, is there a character slash pilot customization, or just units? Uh, there kind of is, and I'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, hang on. Okay, grenades, where are incendiaries? I know you're in here. As in, I'm, I'm pretty sure I made several hundred... Oh, 81. Well, 81 will do. It'll probably be alright for the next few missions anyway. So as far as customization goes, yeah, you have limited customization of all of your uh, different machines and everything else. Um, so, for example, we've got these ones, we've also got tanks, we've also got some other variant that I haven't quite made yet. Uh, over on the aircraft side, we've got, uh, well, we've got a couple different transports that are currently, uh, let's see, one of them needs to be researched, one of them is right here, it's just the basic armored helicopter. As far as the interceptors go, we have a ton of different kinds, so you've got uh, different loadout customization on each of them, uh, just kind of based off what you have available at the time. Now, uh, now yeah. If the basic gist of it, though, we've got some that are these ones, which are basically like anti-fighter. We've got these ones that are kind of anti-landing craft and things like that. Um, but at the moment, uh, I have a lot of different bases running a lot of different planes. Like These are also anti-fighter, but uh, some of them are running multi-role type setups. Uh, but yeah, there's a, a ton of different things going on, but unfortunately we're running a lot of really outdated planes at the moment. Let's see, can you make a superhuman then? Yes. Uh, the problem is I kind of need some units to actually survive a fight. So yeah, recently we've been losing uh, losing a lot of units left and right here. Let's see, production of the series is finished. Okie dokie. Well, that's going to go ahead and need a name. Let's go ahead and um, <laughs> let's get a name for you. How about the Albatross? There we go. That sounds all well and nifty-like. No. These things, at least they're good for, if you let the pilots go do it themselves, they seem to have a pretty high score as far as how they auto-resolve, but I don't know if I can personally pilot them that well. But yeah, you can make a lot of friggin' superhuman characters if you wanted. Uh, over time, by the way, uh, Greenwich is currently the best example of this, but just over time they end up getting uh, awards, they end up uh, getting uh, different stat upgrades as they go on. So. 
to give an idea, let's see, average turn units here. So, yeah, let's see, they're around the 40 range. She's at 100. Uh, average health is about 40, 50. She's at 85. Strength, same thing, about 40, 50. She's at 101. And she's not even, like, she's barely even... Uh, highly, she's barely even decently promoted as far as this mod goes. So I've seen some uh, some videos that other people have put out where they're showing in with stats of like 200, 250, whatever else. It's like showing up carrying three miniguns and whatever else. <laughs> like it's it's pretty messed up. Okay. Uh, also, I wanna uh, let's go ahead and put one of these shock rifles on you. Let's see, what is her ac Yeah, it feels like she's the one who should be running the shock rifle here. Especially after last time. Uh, so if you missed uh, what happened last... Uh, do I want to run pistol on her, though? Uh, maybe. Her accuracy is better, but just... She was able to tank really well last time. Yeah, actually, we're going to run the pistol on her. Uh, so the thing is, you have to get captures as this game goes on. And as far as the, uh, as far as the captures go, they're pretty difficult to pull off, actually. Uh, so in the in the case of this one, um, you have to, generally speaking, your best bet is gonna be some kind of electrocution weapon. This one, let's pop three of these suckers on your belt too. It's like right now the main setup I'm going for uh, for on her is pretty much gonna be like okay, she's got this thing for hopefully like plinking somebody down and capturing them, shield for absorbing damage, armor for hopefully deflecting off some shots. Um, shock grenades for knocking stuff unconscious, and then I'm actually going to throw a couple of these magazine, magazines out in order to get more fire on her. And the fire basically blocks vision, it sets buildings on fire, There's it, it does a lot of cool stuff. Let's see, do they need to be retired after a certain age? Do their stats decrease? Uh, no. Though, I guess technically speaking, the game takes place over the course of a few years. It's like this would still be the first year of the invasion and all that. Okay, so we finished research on the minigun. Uh, do they explain why it's super disappointing? Alright, let's see. Oh, we've got a lot of different stuff to research here. Why can't I... Oh! Probably why, yeah. Freaking research that piranha. I, I need to know what that is. It's like right here we've got a couple of different armors coming in, like Direwolf. If it's anything like the original version, that will probably allow me to unlock some equivalent of uh, buzzard armor, which will hopefully allow these guys to fly. Uh, a buzzard is basically the first type of flying armor that you can get. Uh, normally, like a normal run of this uh, of, uh, of Xenonauts, uh, the original version of this. Let's see. After you conquer Earth, do you go to space? Um, given how this uh, how this ends up going, or rather, given how the game ends up going, like even. The actual ending that you end up getting to, I don't think anyone's conquering space anytime soon. Though you can actually uh, get to the point where you immediately shoot down every single UFO around the Earth, uh, because uh, you, you basically um, you can build what is effectively a Black Hawk with like a nuclear cannon on it, <laughs> and it's literally just like you get no loot from it, but you just get this cool thing of this Black Hawk flying away as a friggin' nuke blows up in the background. It looks really cool. But, uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting mod. It's an interesting mod. Oh, well, actually, that one's there in vanilla. So, like, in vanilla, by endgame, you don't want to deal with UFOs anymore, so you have that thing, like, patrolling the Earth, blowing up everything. It's got infinite gas and whatever else. Um, and then uh, you've got dudes running around with, like, miniguns and power armor, basically looking like the Brotherhood of Steel or Enclave at that point. Have, uh, have a bunch of hover uh, laser tanks off in the background. Uh, bear in mind, this game technically takes place in the 70s, as far as you, if you're wondering um, why tech is so behind compared to most XCOM games. <laughs> yeah, we've basically got a million dollar budget to make it through February now, which, uh, yeah, that's going down pretty quick. As you can see, we're losing about 10 bucks an hour. Uh, that could be going better, but, you know, whatever, we'll, we'll deal. Actually, I found out I made a really stupid mistake and then apparently doubled down on that mistake last time. So there was one of these fortresses, or rather there was an, an outpost. Uh, specifically, they had taken over the Canada base. We went over the Canada base, we took it back, took a whole bunch of casualties doing so. And, uh, yeah, it was like the last person, literally the last person going in and beating the last of the, what are effectively Terminators in there. 
So they did that, they pulled it off, and then, um, and then, yeah, they come back, they're able to revive a few of their friends and all that. They make, make it back and we get a, a base core out of it. Ooh, hello. We've got some kind of gun that shoots dildos. That's interesting. Get research screen. Let's go ahead. I know I, I know I need more scientists, by the way. That's a given. Well, let's go ahead and finish these. Uh, okay, ballistic minigun. That m no, you know what? We need officer interrogation. There we go. Investigate the officer. Okay, so we can build piranhas now. What did those take? Let's see. Those take alloys. Yeah, you know what? That seems interesting. I'm going to go ahead and build four. Uh, we're going to test them out on whatever can actually equip them. Let's see. Do you zoom in on the region to province level and control your army? Uh, you go into um, uh, you go into a, like a, a normal XCOM style of battle map. Uh, so right now, I'm, what I'm waiting on right now is I'm waiting for some UFOs to show up. Uh, so that I can go send the fleet out after them, or what what basically amounts to just my air force all over the world here. To so send out the planes, uh, those guys will hopefully succeed in in uh, shooting some down, at which point we can send some guys out to go deal with it, or they might attack a city or something like that. We'll see how it goes. It like it it's a constant back and forth as far as who's attacking where. Any of these left? No. Yeah, it was kind of a depressing thing, because apparently, the base core, that thing that I had gotten, apparently I wasn't supposed to take it apart and scrap it for parts, because apparently those parts sucked. Actually, the the uh, the guy that made the mod, or one of the four guys that made the mod, uh, basically wrote a comment on there afterwards, like, I'm sorry my heart broke a little when you did something that stupid, because <laughs> the thing was worth like 800 grand. And then I could have stopped the whole disassembly process anytime within the next couple weeks or whatever it was. And forgot I could do that. So then I end up reliving that same mistake a little while later. It's like, ah, God, I'm an idiot sometimes. Okay, Manergy Minigun, we don't really have any more of those. Uh, if you're wondering what's the deal with all this disassembly stuff, you basically research a thing, you find out what parts you can get from it, and then you uh, disassemble stuff in order to, uh, to get materials for different things. It's like right here, I need a few more of these uh, light fibers in order to be able to build, rebuild a tank. Which, uh, yeah, so far that has been a less than ideal circumstance, because every time that I've gone and built a tank, it's done pretty awesome and gotten blown up anyway, but they're very expensive to make. So I'm kind of stuck using crappy uh, hunter cars for the moment. Let's see, so it's not like a uh, heart of iron. Um, not necessarily? Like, that one's got, like, full-on uh, morale mechanics and everything as far as... Well, actually, this does... This has morale mechanics, too. But you do go into the individual cities and do all your fights and everything. There we go. Dire Wolf just wrapped up finishing touch in the Wolf class. Okay, what are we looking at stat-wise? 65 kinetic armor, 80... Okay, good. We have actual energy armor, finally. Uh, 25 chemical ar armor, 25 incendiary. So... More or less, the way that this ends up working is just, if I understand this correctly, if they're hit for under 80, it just ends up absorbing the damage, but it ends up lowering the amount of armor you actually have, so your armor gets slowly planked down as the as the fight goes on. Okay, so we got that done. Uh, heavy plaz. Actually, I think I should be researching matter G, because I think that's probably going to be the thing that upgrades our basic ballistic stuff, which right now is kind of falling behind. Uh, we've been relying on literally just chainsawing stuff with point-blank laser uh, miniguns for a good long while now. Okay, so armor-wise, what do we need for this? Uh, oh, hell crap, you are expensive. Um, Alright, just make one. I'm going to make one for Greenwich. Oof, that crap is going to take... <laughs> that thing takes as much to make as a tank. Jesus. Okay. So we've got three planes from the Emu lands who are ready to go. Okay, we can zoom in here. And yeah, you got all your different cities around all over the place. Oh, we're going to send some... Actually... No, let's see how they do, first of all, because that's a pretty small one. Yeah, that's what I was wondering about. So I'm going to go ahead and send all the Chinese-based fighters after this one. Uh, like I said, we're running a lot of outdated fighters at this point, so 
I'm just sending everything, just swarming everything. And you're gonna you're gonna see we're gonna basically take zero percent odds, and that's perfectly fine. It may seem like a weird thing to do, but it's actually fine uh, because zero uh, percent will still cause uh, damage to whatever they're targeting. Okay, these ones probably are going to uh, reinforce that base a little bit. At this point, that base is so strong there's nothing I can realistically do about it. Uh, but uh, either way, uh, at least until I get some better equipment or something going. Okay, that's still a medium. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Actually, let's go send some some planes over from Canada. There we go. Actually, you know what? Let's send out these. No, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna send these guys out to go deal with this little thing. Because if if uh, if these guys don't succeed, then there's not really much we can do. Uh, ignore that little one. Ignore that one. We just need at least one of these down. Uh, they, they always come in waves, so... There's that. Now, where is that fight exactly? Okay, so we got the fighter, we got some alloys and elenium and all that. Oh, crap. You know what? Actually, disengage. Sorry, a, a little bit... Uh, second thought here. So, you go ahead and attack that one, I guess. They're probably going to go this way. This one's going this way. Actually, you know what? Uh, you know, yeah, no, this squadron needs to go after this one up here. Because odds are this one will go here, patrol back this way, at which point this squadron will be able to take them out. These ones should be able to beat this one. Yeah. Like, again, we're going to lose that first wave we always do. Is that going to be overland? Okay, that one was down here, so they managed to beat that one. 2%, do it anyway. Okay, Molar Supreme, come on. So one of them's escaped. So yeah, that's this guy's. Okay, so you go after this one as well. Come on, Molar Supreme. Okay, it says 0%, so I'm just going to go ahead and try to manual do this thing. See, stop playing Heart of Iron because I don't know how to continue conquering the world after annexing China's Japanese. Uh, wouldn't be able to tell ya. <coughs> Hang on just a sec. Okay, yeah, uh, this Strike Corvette, as much as I need it, uh, there is friggin' nothing that this little plane's gonna be able to do to it. And he's probably gonna die anyway. Uh, thing is, yeah, you need to have a bunch of fighters all up its butt, basically. And I figured that the method I was doing earlier with 37% and 2%, I figured that was gonna be the winner there, but... Uh, it didn't work out. Either way, as long as any of these, uh... Any of these things go down, then we should be good. Additionally, we should probably let's see. Let's go send the one vision out. Which, uh, yes, that's what I named my radar plane. <laughs> so I've got a radar plane I can just go use to, to scan stuff out. Okay, okay, okay. But yeah, as far as Hearts of Iron, now, I'm vaguely aware of its mechanics, but I've never been able to, uh, to get my hands on the series, personally. Okay, intercept. Do I have anything? Okay, I have no active fighters down there at the moment. And yeah, they're just completely getting away with everything. There's very little I can do. You guys got anything? You've only got the Molar Supreme left. Uh, what happened to all my extra storage planes, by the way? Relocate. That, that was the plan. I was supposed to be moving all these over to extra storage. It's gonna be two piranhas. You're gonna reload for a sec. You're gonna go to extra storage. And then I needed to be building more planes. That's what I need to be doing. So let's go build more Asariuses. Yeah. Again, it seems like an odd choice, but just friggin' 
work with me on that one. I don't know why finish time is none for this one. That seems odd. Did we run out of materials? No, we have. I think we have what we need. Oh, it's because they already finished. Okay, so just put all, all the engineers on making these planes. Uh, hopefully, Exusia or whatever it's called. Yeah, there we go. Hopefully, you should be good to go to uh, extra storage. Again, I. You know, it kind of sucks that, uh, that we're getting so badly beaten on that one. But once we get some more uh, technology going. Right now, what we need is to get at least one of these shot down. Then we can build more of those fancy planes, then slowly turn it back around. The problem is, it, like right now, I literally have no answer for a lot of this. So that's kind of the issue. But yeah, this, this run has been going for almost a year now. Okay. Come on, Mr. Scout. Any chance can these two somehow take it down? Like I, I want this one to go in, but it's just shy. They need 50% to be able to go out. So at the very least, show me what kind of odds you're working with. Okay. Showing zero percent. Right. You're gonna go this way. I'm gonna go this way now. Yeah, it, it's interesting. You can kind of, sort of play around with their AI a little bit. So there's a decent chance that once this guy locks on, that this one will turn around and try to attack him instead. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> they're they're not even fast enough to lock on this thing. And this is with all of their speed bonuses on right now. Oh, Insta dead. Okay, well that's good to know. They're gonna fire one, they're gonna dodge. And yeah, they're toast. Well, we tried. <laughs> oh, that's that pulse thing. I saw him doing a demo of that pulse thing before. Eh, well, that went well. See, that's why we need better plans, basically. Um, I can send a bunch of them, and if they auto-resolve, generally speaking, the AI will do a pretty competent job. Also, hang on, I need to go see what's going on with this random fussing situation over here. One moment.
All right, and and I'm back. Okay, so yeah, the uh, the, the, yeah, the the UFO thing so fast. Yeah, that was one of the shuttle ones. Uh, basically, they're ex that one it just seemed to be really, really, really close range. But uh, if I had any uh, like anti fighter units or whatever there, which is I believe that was that one I was waiting on, uh, that would have been a bit more helpful. Okay, so we got 13 dudes here. One dude here. More plasma things. Let's see. Allo alloy hardening seems like the kind of thing we need. Now, as far as uh, as far as planes being more important than other things, it's basically several different layers. It's like the planes are important, but you can also kind of mass produce a bunch of them. Uh, so here we go. Take that. So zero percent auto resolve. They're all going to get shot down. Next one comes in. Hopefully, they're going to do a bit better. Auto resolve. Again, the AI will do better than I will at this point. I kind of suck at the air game. Come on, you've got this. What else are we dealing with here? Some little one over here. Yeah, nothing to send against it, so whatever. But yeah, when your planes get shot down, they get rebuilt again. Don't try to run. Oh, come on. This is just some blue balls crap right here. I hate it when the AI does that. And they're like, yeah, I'm going to escape with just enough to, to get away. So odds are they probably would have had a much higher percentage of succeeding, but whatever. So for now, uh, once these planes are done, uh, once these ones are done in extra storage, uh, I'm going to be setting up several different bases to just kind of mass produce some of these planes, like Foxtrots and Asariuses and things like that. These ones I've got plenty of parts for at the moment, and I can make quite a decent amount of them. Um, plus, I can hopefully give them some better weapons here. Maybe some of them spear cannon things? Do I have any of those laying around? Uh, where are them spear cannons? But yeah, so once you're on the ground though, the planes... Like, the, the planes do their job, then you get on the ground, and stuff's even scarier on the ground. So yes, no, mechs are absolutely necessary. Uh, not to mention uh, vehicles and mechs and all that kind of thing. You do, uh, they're basically a free slot on your transport. So you don't have to worry about bringing them along. Now, okay, vehicle weapons. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make some uh, fighter beams. Say four of those, because I think those will end up functioning a bit better on the Asariuses. Field is fully operational. Okay, one vision. You just uh, keep trolling around here. Tell me what we're dealing with. Uh, that thing is supposed to be an early game crutch, by the way. Uh, to the, at this point, I don't know if it serves any further purpose, but it very well might. So you can use ICBM. Later on, you can. And actually, every time that you fail a terror mission, it's automatically used. So if you fail a terror mission, like they, they, they're not even going to try to get the town back. It just gets nuked, and then you get in trouble. Okay, so far this is the first month in the entire run that we're actually going negative in terms of income. Just because there's, there was nothing I could do to stop any of those. Yeah, research is kind of why. Now, as far as all of this goes... Right! I'm a friggin' idiot! I meant to hire more scientists, and never did. Wait, did I? Oh, it's because I don't have any living space. Okay, let's send out some... Um, <laughs> We need to send out some rookies to other bases. So okay. Let's take all y'all. However many this is. Go ahead and transfer them to Canada. Because I don't think I ever replenished their store of rookies. Now let's go ahead and to go to the lab here. Let's go hire some tough scientists. Yeah, the problem is I have a ton of research, but I haven't been able to get it all done. There we go. So we get them in. Let's go transfer more dudes. And yeah, at the same time, despite all the sheer number of dudes I have here, uh, it might it might actually be time to tone down the number of engineers I have. Yeah, in fact, I think I will probably be okay with 30 engineers. Just fire 10 of them. Right. 
Like, I realize the optimal thing would be to move my uh, workshop somewhere else. But for now, that'll work. And then whatever this winds up with should be enough. Okay, hire those guys. They should be here eventually. How do you get income? Uh, basically through region. Well, you can sell things that you that you find. Uh, so, for example, you take over a base, you take the, the you take the core from it. Uh, you can sell that for like eight hundred thousand uh, dollars. If you capture downed UFOs, you can sell them for money. Uh, you capture their equipment, you can sell that for money. But uh, generally speaking, uh, ooh. yeah, fighter aircraft. Definitely go upgrade the fighter aircraft. Uh, but generally speaking, you get it from just how well you're performing. Uh, so, for example, we've been going like positive 175,000 for pretty much since the start of the run. Actually, there was one of them that was like positive 200 grand or something like that. But it's like if you end up defending a place successfully, if you end up succeeding on a mission, like as long as you don't outright fail, uh, they will keep giving you more money. But then as soon as you start failing, they get upset about it. Uh, we've had a couple terror missions fail, but we still manage to get some people out. So they basically, like, if you don't show up to a terror mission at all, they're like, that country's just going to turn on you immediately. But if you, for example, actually, let's, what can I do with these? Fighter beams. Fighter beam, fighter beam, fighter beam. And then I'm going to transfer them over to extra storage. But yeah, so you, so you get more and more, the better you do there. And as you can see, we've already burned through half our budget in like a week, so that's not great. In fact, it's probably about time to start selling some crap. So, go ahead and arrange by value. The fallen fighters. I'm sure we're gonna need those later, but for now, we need monies. Go ahead and sell 225,000 worth of those. That's when I'm going to find out that those are probably the ones that end up giving me the computers I need, which I probably should have checked beforehand. When the scientists arrive, I'll know for sure. But either way, I can't really afford losing out on budget right now. Friggin' Robo Dogs. Apparently, I already took all of them apart. Stun Rockets. Okay. So I'm just seeing what kind of extra parts I can get here real quick to see if maybe I can eventually get that tank. Unfortunately, it seems like everything uses light fibers, nothing uses heavy fibers, which I have a ton of, for whatever reason. Alright, go ahead and just take apart that flame pistol. Let's see what this armor looks like, first of all. So we've got Captain Greenwich here. Wow, that looks pink. Okay. Well, that's... yeah. That drastically reduced her speed, but uh, that, that's going to be some serious armor on there. It did improve her accuracy, though. That's the thing. With a lot of these armors, you end up seeing stuff like uh, them reducing accuracy or increasing accuracy. Like Jackal ends up increasing accuracy. Um, Alright. So, fair enough. She's basically looking like uh, Judge Dredd right now. Because you don't worry, Elon Musk also burns through a lot of his money in the early stages of his company. Yeah, we're... I don't know how early stages we're in right now, but, you know, I, I this is around mid-game. At least it should be around mid-game. Can I make a shotgun? Yes, I can. Okay, I can make one shotgun, which is basically an electric shotgun. And yes, it is named for a pun. Okay, now, how many of these interceptors can I put in extra storage? Like, as long as I end up beefing up some of these bases that need help, that'll probably end up changing things a little bit. And it feels like fighter beams are probably the, uh, the ideal right now. And yeah, give me more series as, as well. Yeah, I, I was kind of uh, holding off on building a lot of this stuff. But it, it seriously has gotten to the point where I just need a crap load of planes, and that's about it. Just because the, the main fighter that I put together there, the Sonda, apparently it you need like an entire fleet of them in order for them to actually be effective. Because so far I haven't really seen it do much better than anything else. 
Because what I, what I had were missile boats, which basically go in with uh, heavy torpedoes. They can uh, take down landing craft and things like that in larger numbers. Uh, then there were also anti-fighters, which usually showed up with like two light missiles and then also uh, also like a, a minigun or something on the front of it. And then there's that one, which doesn't have any dodge roll. It doesn't seem to be able to turn terribly well, though apparently that was also my fault. And, uh, yeah, for some reason just uses two light weapons rather than anything else. Okay, so we got the basic rundown of what they are here. Uh, good to know that the uh, beige toids are physicians. I still prefer the name beige toid, though. Okay, pilots are yellow. Weapons officers are green. Nifty. Anyhow, yeah, we found out about these guys. There's a psionic lizard man, really. Didn't know that there was <laughs> friggin' psionic iguana somewhere. Good to know. Okay. So that's presumably... Why is that coming from alloy hardening, I wonder? Hmm. Yeah, sometimes you get just like little free side researches that give you information like that, which normally that would come from like interrogating a civilian officer or something like that. Um, apparently not the case there. Okay, shotgun is finished. Good. Hmm. I feel like Flamefly wants to use that. Well, he's using that thing. And we've got one extra rifle for him. I mean, this thing, this thing is just really good, is the thing. Yeah, this boosts accuracy. I might just leave him with Jackal for the sake of that extra accuracy. About doing it this way. Yeah, that shotgun is looking like something out of Mass Effect. There we go. He's he's all right there. We're gonna have to find somebody. Hmm. We'll see who we have. We'll see who we have. Got a lot of minigun users at this point, and no missions. This is the first time I've ever gone this long without a mission. Hypno Toad. Exactly. He's looking like the Hypno. Dude, how did I not immediately think of that too? <laughs> That took me a second. I guess that's, of course, that's a psionic reptile. Ah. Okay, good. Finally. Finally, we got some scientists. Well, we got one scientist. Okay, one scientist. You take a quick peek at this minigun. So the one guy looks over. Yeah, I'm making good progress. It's just me here. But I'm making good progress. <laughs> so apparently that was intentional. Like, you get, for the most part, the actual breakpoints for stuff to go into excellence are way lower than before. Uh, their actual logic being that, honestly, if your science team is reporting, they're never going to report poor uh, performance. It's like, yeah, no, everything is going great all the time. Don't worry about it. Okay, there we go. So we've got four excellent projects. Things are going excellently. Definitely not getting kicked in the dick over and over here. Nothing to worry about there at all. Uh, where is this one? Okay, so extra storage currently has four planes. What I need to do is get rid of... Where are they? Uh, these stupid things. So, Independence Day. I'm sorry, you are gone. Yes, you are not even worth it as an extra plane anymore. They're actually just a friggin' strain on budget. Uh, the one vision, I'm actually tempted to retire as well, because we haven't really needed a radar plane in a while. It's just kind of there. So I might consider doing that. I don't know if there's going to be an upgrade to it later. That's the only reason that I haven't gotten rid of it already. Uh, yeah, these little things, they need to go. And yeah, I'm going to need some new uh, new names for these planes. These friggin' F-16s are just not really going to cut it anymore. They haven't cut it for about a year, so... <laughs> we'll, we'll go ahead and throw those in the dumpster. Don't even bother taking them apart, just throw them in the dumpster. Uh, hire more scientists, more living quarters. I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay, we, get, we got fighters, whatever that tells us. Just part of our free research. Uh, got seven guys available. Hmm. Yeah, the main issue right now is that I need to let's see. Come up with plans for an upgraded spear cannon. That seems very useful. Okay, projects available to build a fighter. Ooh. Okay, we've actually got the parts. Oh, yeah, Fallen Aid and Alien Fighter. Of course, it would be the stuff I just sold. <laughs> of course it would be. Anyway, uh, go ahead and get rid of those serious... Actually, you know what? 
Leave those as Siriuses. No, get rid of those as Siriuses, yeah. Get, get rid of them. We're going to lose out a little bit on budget there, but... Go ahead and start just mass-producing fighters. Whatever they look like. Oh, they're literally just repurposed alien fighters, actually. Now that I think about it. Alright, let's see if you Chuckle Buckets can maybe take this thing down. Main reason I'm sending them after this right here is they might end up getting more fighters, potentially. Oops, and I just knocked my phone over. How about that? I need more scientists and more living quarters, I'm aware. So, lo the logistics of making that happen are the issue. So, right now I'm relocating all planes from my main base over to extra storage here. Yeah, we got several planes to launch after this little thing. Surely, with our new fancy plane, you know, and four relatively decent ones, we should be able to make some progress there. Send these guys out. And then, of course, you know, several more come in all over the place. We can't even answer. Just stop even telling me. I know. Okay, 0% auto-resolve. Do we get anything out of it? No. You auto-resolve, do you get anything out of it? No. Okay, so they, they weren't even able to take a single one down. Uh, that's fine. It's not fine, but it's fine. Let's go after this one. For you. It feels like we should be able to manual this one, so... Got two fighter beams and a Mauser, so we've got going here, you going here. Yeah, we're so broke that we're been only putting one fighter beam on there now, apparently. Yeah, this thing is slow as crap, though, so there's at least that. Good. So he is targeting this one. That gives the other two a chance to unload. Let's turn off afterburners then, and go proceed on that way. Turn afterburners back on. A little bit farther. If you're wondering why I'm not just targeting the thing directly, it, uh, it the AI tends to be a little bit derpy when it comes to that. So it needs to be right up its butt to be able to do that. you to back off before you uh, da, 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 roll right yeah like I said the AI despite what I've been told that apparently they're supposed to be able to be pretty decent as far as uh, sticking close and you know not ruining themselves in my experience they have been pretty unfortunate with that oh probably because they still had afterburners on that can definitely explain it At this point, the Bacon Dragon needs to go this way. Actually, I need you to go this way and this way, please. They're going to be a little on the slow side, but... Should be able to get their damage in. Uh, feels like they probably should have enough fight, enough uh, firepower in them to pull this off. Go for a little bit of a strafing type thing right here. You go do the same. What's that doing? We're at medium damage already. They've still got plenty in them. They can pull this off. Thing is, Bacon Dragon needs to speed the hell up here. Without his distraction, this is impossible. Come on, just tail him. Just tail him. What are you doing? So he's a critical. Got seven shots left on this guy. Yeah, Bacon Dragon might need to get involved here. At this rate. Fire last few shots. Right, so he's at 86%. So if I can somehow cause him to aggro on these two, then we're good. You guys go this way.
Get out of here. Oh. Miss, please. Oh, that's just... Ah, that's so friggin' tight there. Okay. Oh, we might have to leave and re-engage here. In order to make this happen. See, finish time is infinite? Uh, not really. Uh, so, if you look on the right, you see... Uh, they've got a uh, few levels on there as well. The thing is, the only one with any realistic firepower left at this point is, uh, is the Bacon Dragon. So I need to completely aggro, uh, somehow aggro this thing, but I don't know how to do that. The only way I can think of is to get him completely out of range somehow. These guys are just taking damage, and that's about it. Turn off your burners. Yeah, I, I don't think they can even re-aggro this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and get them out of here. Actually, can I turn you back by chance? No, he's already out of here. Okay. That's fine. All right, you guys need to re-engage that thing. There we go. Auto-resolve 100% now. Good. So that improved our monthly income. Oh, crap, there goes my phone again by about uh, 20 grand. So at least made up for a third of the failures so far. Something. I really need to stop slapping around this phone. Definitely would be uh, helping out a bit. Also, hot dang, I've been, uh, <laughs> it's funny, I was, I was posting about uh, general, like, mods and stuff like that for, uh, for Tactics Ogre lately, and I uh, just went over, you know, saw a bunch of people posting about it over in the JRPG Reddit and all that, and apparently posted so many times that it isn't letting me respond to stuff for a little while. So, that's a thing. So, hopefully... But yeah, I, I'm looking at the thing this morning, it's like, you've got 37 replies! I'm like, oh crap, this is going to take a while to reply to. Okay. So, extra storage, first of all. Airplanes. You. Have nothing. Okay, why do you have nothing? Why do we not have fighter beams? I I just told you to make fighter beams. You are still making fighter beams, it's been about... Oh yeah, it might actually help to have people dedicated to this job, huh? Hmm... So you're talking about JRPGs, do you play Last Remnant? That sounds familiar. I'm gonna say no, but I know I've heard about it. Uh, truth be told, if there's an SRPG of some dis- or typically I play more SRPGs than uh, JRPGs, uh, but um, but yeah, typically, as long as it isn't like, extraordinarily anime-esque, uh, odds are I've probably at least uh, looked into it. Alright, we've got some dudes in the emo lands. Uh, let's. Uh, emu lands, rather. Let's go ahead and send one of those out. Alright, they're going back towards the extra storage. There we go. Surely these can do something. Now, I'm hoping Squadron 2 gets there first. Okay. What can I do about you? Basically, nothing. So. Enjoy free reign. There's kind of piss all I can do right now. Okay, there we go. Now, they've got a really good chance of winning this. Just kind of automatically. So you see you control the union instead of individual action. Okay. Interesting. It, the, if it's the one I'm thinking of... Also, why the hell does he only have one? It says he has two piranhas, but it only shows one active. That about. Anyway, um, if it's the one I'm thinking of, it was one that, like, I, I remember all the little bits of it were, like, some uh, very standard anime-looking guy in the middle of an army, and then it just had a whole bunch of, like, little background commands. So it might be the same one that we're talking about here. Okay, let's see, who's he aggro to? I think he's aggro to unit one here. Yes, okay, so he's aggro to our new fighter. So these other two can get all up his butt then. 
Thing is, very few of these planes actually appear to re-aggro to different targets for some reason. Let's go ahead and turn off afterburners here so you're not taking so long. Yeah, how much did that do? 13%. That is acceptable. Go ahead and turn these off. Okay, why can this stupid thing not roll? Right. Forgot that it can't roll. It's a problem. Come on, shoot it down. Shoot it down. There we go. Why that was only 65%, I don't know. That feels like it should have been 100 given what we were working with. And finally, we have a ground mission here. So let's go ahead and get our team ready. Let's see. So do we learn our skills to use it? To prevent someone to, into a certain role, we need to disable some skill in some other tree. Hmm. That seems potentially interesting as far as setups go. Um, okay. Let's see, flame fly. Okay, you're probably fine with that setup. Jackal, we need green witch in here. We need our champion. Alright, you go ahead and get on the Sky Ranger. That, that is the Sky Ranger, yeah? Are the Sky Ranger? Yes, that is the Sky Ranger. Okay, so we need two more dudes and a tank. So, let's go ahead. Let's go for a higher reflex team because we're going to be doing a raid on a small thing. Okay. So there we go. She is perfectly fine, just basically going in looking like some very pink Judge Dredd. Uh, he's going in looking for stuns. Uh, let's see, Corporal, I lost to an Emu. You're actually going to get a stun rifle. As weird as that sounds. Actually, you're going to get the shotgun. I want to test this thing out. Shotgun for reloads. Uh, you're going to... Is that one-handed by chance? Dude, that thing is one-handed. Dude. Okay, that's a freaking game changer right there. Okay. And you get some fire. Okay, for all these privates. Right. <laughs> I have them all set up for uh, basically suicide rookie rolls. Uh, let's go. There we go, Raven. Uh, no armor, uh, but they're gonna get decent rifles. Mm, okay, what's your deal? You've got really good reflexes, kind of iffy accuracy. Uh, we're gonna go... Hmm. Let's give you uh, an, an HMG, I think. That's far from optimal, but whatever. It'll work. Got some base gold crap equipment to give these guys. Okay, Eric Nielsen, you've got decent health, decent everything. Okay, so you're kind of average across the board. Uh, we're going to go SMG and shield, I think, on you. Uh, just because I'm, I'm not expecting to take this one too seriously, I hope. Wait a minute. What the hell were we fighting? Light Scout. Mm, you know what? Take a lighter shield and go ahead and uh, get some fire with you. Yep. Alright, minigunner here. Also take some fire. Second minigunner. I'm actually going to give you. Where is it? Give you one of these. In case you need it later. Actually, you do not need to be a minigunner. You are absolutely not suited for that role at all. You can't even reload the dang thing. So, in that case, you know what? Just take it. It's fine, but you're never going to be able to reload it. Uh, take a shock and a fire, and then you are looking mighty depressing there, sir. Again, probably calling them disposable rookies doesn't really help with morale now, does it? You're gonna go ahead and take a. Oh wow, your accuracy sucks balls. Okay, um. Mm, what about a flamethrower? We haven't had one of them in a while. Actually, no. No, no, no. Mm, let's go. I'm gonna go laser minigun on you, maybe. Get to use. Surprisingly, he does. Now, we're gonna go with shotgun on you. There we go. And mostly have him as a uh, grenader, I think. And a medic. He's going to be our team medic. There we go. That's looking acceptable. Yeah, this team's screwed, by the way. 
Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, I don't want to go div gun or I think we're gonna, we'll bring Bob the car along for this one. Nothing ever goes wrong with one when one of day cars units uh, goes along. Nothing ever at all. Nothing to worry about. For reference, he's been brought back to life like I don't know 20 times now. Okay, this sucks. They're building a base over here. So I'm going to go ahead and preemptively send the One Vision out. Apparently when they're out doing scouting missions and stuff like that, apparently they end up getting some good research done. Let's see. So they don't level, only battle rank. The way character stats is influenced by the difference between your army battle rank. Alright. Fair enough. That kind of sounds like the way One Vision does things a little bit. See, plane battle seems fun. What's disposable rookies as a role? Uh, basically, I, I think that was the one that I had set up for uh, sniper rifles. Uh, but when that alien fortress down on the bottom, uh, what I had done is actually sent, I want to say in total, like 70 rookies in there, uh, just holding a shield and C4, attempting to find... Uh, uh, you can take out the... What's it? Uh, there's like a little generator thing that powers the place. So I've sent a bunch of them in in order to try and just kind of deal with it that way. We end up losing anything that's over there, so we don't really get anything out of it, but it stops the base from existing, which means that they don't send out nearly as many planes. Like, that's part of the part of what started this problem. But they were able to get away with building the, the thing. Early on, I had a chance to beat it, and then just one bad turn ended up completely wrecking that entire raid on the thing early on. Uh, then subsequent raids weren't possible, but it did allow for some extra technology to be researched. Um, then from there on, they just kept sending more and more and more to the point where my planes were just not able to handle it anymore. So hopefully with these recent changes, that can maybe turn around. But we'll see. Right, we got the Bacon Dragon and Jacko. Just go for an auto-resolve, see if they accomplish anything, and they don't. Oh well. Worth a try. Worth a try. Yeah, they're just upgrading that thing even farther. I don't think it can go past Fortress, so there's really no point in even trying to stop the ones going in there. I'm just trying to get more fighters out of it. <laughs> Man, that's kind of funny. Just, uh... <laughs> just was thinking recently of the different balance choices between a bunch of different SRPGs, specifically between uh, the, the two different versions of TO that came out in PSP and all that. And it's just weird that they seem to have the same mentality uh, that they did with some older oh, Wait a minute, we showed up at night. Crap. Alright, well, Ultra Tanky Green Witch coming out then. So that seems fine. Do we have map edge? We do. Okay, so we got map edge this way. Um, you go this way. Thankfully, the nice thing with X Division is they don't seem to do what they did in vanilla, uh, wherein the game would just kind of... It would really just fall apart by this point, I feel. Uh, because the way that it worked, uh, around this point, instead of having enemies get smarter or whatever else, they just came in with a ton of health and cannons. So it would come to the point where you would send like three guys and point blank them with shotguns or whatever else. They're like, oh, that's cute. And then they would fire a cannon, blow themselves up, and those three guys. It's just like, well, why? Why you do this? That's just mean. Anyway, so the reason that I have uh, Bob the car here is mostly as a bit of a suppression thing. Uh, they might end up coming through here. So any places where there's somebody standing around, I'm fairly confident that they're going to attack somebody else before they attack my guys. So we're going to spread out here, try to get eyes on anything, really. Uh, they're probably going to be crashed over here in the middle of some buildings, so we're going to have to clear this entire area out. Let's move you up here and squat. And Mr. Shocky Gun, you're going to go over here. Or, uh, Mr. Zappy Gun, yeah, you go over here. Mini Gun, you go follow up this one. And then Mr. Sh oh, wait, what? Didn't I give you the shotgun? What did I give... did I give that thing to somebody who isn't even here? Well, screw it. <laughs> ah, what can you do? So that's everybody. Did I really do that? 
No, 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 no. I'm Mr. I lost to an emu has it. Let's see, TO1 vision seems easier for me. Currently still chapter 3 fall. When you see the tank moves, I remember about Kyrie Chronicles. Yeah. Dude, that game was just the epitome of how much bullcrap you could do in one turn. Like, the best things are when you go through and you look at all the A rank runs and things like that. Uh, specifically, there was a guy named uh, Halloween that did a really amusing run. Uh, but, like, they would just go in and like, okay, let me just go ahead and use this tank to basically time travel. <laughs> it's just, just like this one tank goes as everybody else has stopped in time. Just, like, goes forward and just wrecks the entire army. Like, yeah, this is... This is pretty awesome. It doesn't even matter that it's not the most balanced thing in the world. It's pretty awesome. Alright, so we've got Super Cop over here aiming this way, so presumably there's someone over here. Got nothing to back that up, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop my minigunner down here. Go ahead and watch this little hallway. Uh, feels like this building's clear, so I'm going to move up my HMG. Zappy Gun, you too. Actually, I'm going to need you to... Alright. I'm going to need you to look over this way, just in case. I I'm going to have him go explore the second floor. There's a door out here. He might be able to see if there's anything over here on the terrace. Uh, shield. You're going to go over here and get ready to be useful. Green Witch. Uh, you're going to go here back up Super Cop. If you're wondering, wondering why I call them Super Cops, these guys are weirdly good. <laughs> they don't have any extra stats or anything, it's just more often than not. They seem to be way more tenacious than any of the other NPCs that show up, like even the army guys. They're just like, oh, I'm sorry, there's a UFO over there, let me go take my friggin' pistol and go try to raid that thing. So, yeah, always makes me think of Kung Fury. Let's see, tanks have quite bad consumption, they originally need to consume two command units so you can move two. Well, yeah, but still. I mean, you could still do amazing stuff with it. Actually, I think the best ones were uh, when... I think for one of them, they just severely overleveled a scout. And they just had them running, running around doing point blank headshots and everything. So they were just getting ridiculous movements, and then they would just spend turn after turn after turn on this one scout. <clears throat> it's like upgrading them and leveling them up over and over. It's pretty great. And like, yeah, you have to level up the entire class, but still. You know, and it's actually funny because I, th I feel like VK did the whole leveling up the class thing a fair bit better than uh, than the original, uh, or rather the PSP version of TO did. Just because, you know, it, it actually made sense in that context, and you didn't have that high of a level. Uh, really, the, the balance started falling apart at the point where you could, you know, you, you got one class going up so many times that it didn't even matter anymore, and then, well, there was really nothing for it at that point. Alright, so we got a CZ in over there. Tell you what, get back up for a second. We take a couple quick bursts here. See if you can get them suppressed. Excellent. All right. I'm gonna have you go here. So I'm gonna have him go here. I'm gonna have him run up and uh, point blank this thing. Uh, he's gonna stay here on defense. You gonna go up here. Yeah, that's all clear. Go check that out a little bit. But yeah, so, so <laughs> it's funny. I think I finally, um, I've been going through and uh, trying to do that whole Scrooge run uh, on uh, on the original um, uh, version of the PSP game again. So I, I forget, were you Ron, were you here for the uh, the Scrooge run? See, it's the original depends on the weapon. True. True, true, true. But yeah, I don't know if you were there for the screw drone, but the, the long and short of it is just like, you can't spend money unless it's to buy a crafting book. And then it's like, it's literally just supposed to be, he's just, Denim has become some miserly old bastard. He's just like, nope, nobody's allowed to spend money, nobody's allowed to do anything, and that guy is a genius, look at that. Freaking brilliant right there. He's like, yes, I'm gonna pop myself right in front of this minigun. This'll work out great for me. But yeah, so... It's a pretty fun run. Like it, for one vision, it works out really well because the main challenge of it. Oh, come on, come on, you got this. Uh, the main challenge of it comes from the fact. Ooh, maybe we can get a shotgun her back there. Uh, it comes from the fact that you're basically going through the entire thing trying to only use equipment that you find on the ground. 
Uh, the rules of it are you can you can only use the store to buy crafting books and craftings. You cannot hire anyone. You cannot buy any items there, uh, consumable or otherwise. Um, you uh, can only go to either the next plot objective or uh, to uh, like something like Bromper or whatever else, one of the bonus areas. You have to go through the entire thing. You can't use Chariot, you can't reload, and it's an Iron Man rule set. So if at any point Denim dies, that's it. But if, like for example, if you lose, like, let's say, a team that didn't involve him, then you just basically reload the save and fire them. Because they were lost. Okay, first of all, can you hit this guy? That's a definite maybe? Hang on, you can see that guy. Can't quite aim at him. Where's the other one? They're over there. You know what? Tell you what. You. Shot at that thing. Blow all that mess up. That didn't do what I wanted it to. It's fine. So you go over here. You just keep eyes on that thing. I should probably have waited for him to get closer. I didn't expect the walls to be able to withstand the blast, actually. Okay, so that guy went over here. I don't want him. Hmm. Tell you what, I want this guy gone though. Chuck this up here. He resisted it, but he's burning. So, and I, uh, yeah, he's a little bit short on being able to fire again, unfortunately. If you take a step forward, you can no longer fire. So if that thing decides to come down, he will fire on it. You gonna get all defensive in this doorway here. So you're gonna get over here, and, or no, you're gonna go over here, and you're gonna expect to start dealing with this crap. Meanwhile, this guy. How many shots can you give me on this? None. Why can't you hit this? weird. Okay, so apparently his gun can't penetrate windows. Alright, tell you what. Over here, then. Don't like the kind of non-progress we've made this turn. I'm gonna go ahead and throw an incendiary over here, hopefully prevent them from running out this way. Okay, there we go. Blow out some windows, hopefully set this all on fire. Yeah, so if they run through this, they'll take damage. Oh, okay. Also, first off, Mr. Cow, sorry for missing your message. Looking at the new house. Is it looking good? Not falling apart or any of that? Actually looking like a house? Um, hmm. I'll tell you what. What do you see in here? Should be a whole lot of scary nonsense, actually. Yeah, you go ahead and set that crap on fire, because I know there's guys over here. She just can't see them. Right. There's the two super cops, there's that thing. Could have sworn there was one more, but hopefully it's fine. I have a feeling with her armor and shield, she should be able to withstand fighting this guy. So over here, and then take two turns, and hopefully she should be fine. Okay. Let's hope we're okay. I don't know for sure. Let's see. PSP Velcare Chronicle the Scout is not as OP. Most of the time they can't get on me in one turn. Ah, uh, yeah, true. I, I tried the, the one on PSP a while ago. It just kind of bummed me out that, um... Oh, crap. Okay, it's just a smoke grenade. It's fine. Ooh! And he put himself in optimal position right there. Oh, and this thing's setting itself on fire... Oh, we potentially got some good stuff going here. Okay, good, good, good. Please let me have my turn, my turn now. I've got answers for this. <clears throat> so for one thing, I basically have Green Witch run forward, set this area on fire, have the uh, Jeep pull in, and go ahead and finish it off. I should be almost dead at this point. Uh, but yeah, no, the, the PSP version of uh, Valkyria Chronicles, it, it just kind of bugged me that uh, they took out the permadeath feature. Like, I know it's weird to want that, but it's just, it's I don't know, I feel like it makes the game better. 
<sighs> Thanks, Morale Mechanic. People totally like you. <clears throat> okay, 41 to snap fire point blank. Okay, so this thing, yeah, it's just a straight up that kind of situation. Tell you what. Can you finish him? Not quite, but you might be able to. Okay, so you need 38 for a burst. Finish him. <clears throat> I was hoping we'd be able to capture him, but screw it. He is going to be turned into paste instead. But we've got someone firing from over here, but I can't really do anything about that. Actually, I can probably... Let's see, you've got shot down here. Our main guy for actually scouting in that direction isn't available, so I'm going to go ahead and try to go for a suppression. Uh, you. Okay, we know where that guy went, so you're going to go up here, you're going to try to set him on fire. Here we are. Oh, please open this all up. Okay, good. And he's gone. He's gone. So, just so you know, and unfortunately this guy is injured now. I didn't realize he was over there. Actually, I probably could have just left that situation and he could have finished it off on his own. Just so you know, the reason that I'm kind of willy-nilly about whether or not I'm capturing them here, despite having all this capture equipment with me, is simply because it, it's just more... Ooh, hello. We can see you, but we can't shoot ya. Well, I have nobody to really answer that. Not this guy, though. Chance, can you burst fire at this guy? No? Okay. Worth an ask, worth an ask. Okay. Then you just go back here. And we know he's not suppressed also. Can I go for a shock? Excellent. I didn't hear the rare rare sound, so that probably only slightly injured him. And we can probably go ahead and dedicate the car towards scouting out this area now. So yeah, the main person of these, the, or rather, the main reason for these little scout cars is just because they can see a really long, uh, long way because they're headlights. I, I would personally really like if there was an, if there was an option to go ahead and mod this into an old Ford, like just an old rusty Ford Taurus. <laughs> but whatever. Just stopped in to say hi and good luck. Well, thank you. Yeah, no, no fairies involved in this one, though I'm pretty sure each individual uh, Xenonaut unit is weaker than any fairy he's ever dreamed of. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and nom on that guy. These in particular, if I could go ahead and capture, those would be very handy. Uh, because they're the only way, at least the only way I know of so far, of upgrading melee weapons. Oh, crap. Ah, dang it. Freaking stun bombs. Okay, so they're just unconscious, but still. That's the thing with Seasians. They come in with uh, riot gear and things like that, so they're coming in to do their captures. You're here to scout. It makes sense for them to have that kind of equipment on them. Still. Also, they're apparently trying to go and stun Greenwich over here. <clears throat> Which is just a sucky deal right there. Alright. How can we pull this off? <laughs> and Greenwich has passed out. Crap. Charlie, you're the one with the medkit, right? Good. Charlie the doctor. So that guy's over there. We go ahead and watch this corner. We've got a Xenomorph over here. We've got these guys for distractions. Gotta wait for that gas to dissipate before he can pick her back up anyway. He's gonna need to put in a lot of work here. Those guys are down. I know that he fired from about here, so... Let's go ahead and see about at least suppressing him a little bit. I'm gonna need you here. You see him? Oh, please hit this tank. You somehow hit that tank. 52%? Okay. This could work. Nailed it. Blow it all up! Come on! Big ol' kaboom! Yeah, he's gone. Or not! Wow. Through all that, he still managed to take it. 
<laughs> that is genuinely impressive. You're one resilient bastard, you know that? Okay, suppressed. And just do it again for good measure. Okay. So, yeah, we know there's at least a guy over here. So, yeah, let's uh, move you this way. Uh, who do we have left now? Uh, Flamefly? Hmm. Yeah, we, we definitely need to be utilizing them a little bit better. Uh, it looks like this window over here is actually usable. So, okay. Can he actually get shots for once? No. Why can he not get shots from anywhere? It seriously might just be that this weapon can't penetrate windows, so I have to break it. But at least he can scout. So that's fine. Speaking of scouting... I'm going to go ahead and watch that doorway. In fact, you're going to go ahead and suppress that doorway. If there's anybody on the other side of it. And away we go. So we've got one guy watching the door. Probably not going to do very much. He's just going to attack the guy with the shield. Uh, guy in the fire is probably just going to die in the fire. Ooh, what the hell just happened there? Actually, it just dropped to the ground, so there's a decent chance he got shotgunned and might have gotten knocked unconscious, rather than exploding. So yeah, those things will actually explode into acid gas when they explode, because yes, they are exactly those aliens. So, let's go double-check that situation. Yeah, there he is right there, so that's dealt with. Alright, let's move you here. It's just enough to be able to get a view of the door, not enough for them to actually act on attack. You've got 22. So you just go ahead and suppress this guy a little bit. Alright, Greenwich is still down. Who do you see? see a Caesian there. Okay, you know what? You know what? This is the test here. Can you fire at this? No. Window is broken. Can you fire? Yes. So that was it. Alright, so that's not great. Missed his burst fire. It's alright. Second, second thing here. Laser carbine. You're probably going to pick that up because I, I want one of those. But for the time being, you need to go medicate your commander here. Okay, that's all we really need. If anything comes around this corner, it should get stunned by their own gas, and we should go right there. Uh, this guy's gonna run around the corner, pray that there's nothing over here, and then hopefully he can run up and minigun this thing. Now, who do we have left? Uh, he's got fire. So you can see that guy. What are your odds of setting this area ablaze? Not very, because his throwing rate sucks. Whatever. Just take a few shots, then. Okay. We're slowly making this work. Emphasis on slowly. One alien guy passed the car last turn? Yeah. I, that's the one that passed out, by the way. Um, that's uh, the one that's on the ground. So I think what happened, the uh, shotgun guy might have uh, might have hit him, knocked him out, and then I think presumably something else got him after that point. It's hard to say for sure. That's one of the cool things about this game. It's so chaotic, you know? Just all kinds of stuff going on all the time. Okay. Ooh. This isn't safe by any means. Right, this guy is so suppressed he can't even move. Press, please. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering what the deal is with these guys not taking damage from the front, uh, they have some. They have little uh, portable shields. So this guy is an operator, I believe. There we go. Not enough to knock him out, but still. Should be messing up with a shield pretty well. I don't know if shock weapons affect shields that much. Feels like they should. So downed units will end up dropping all their equipment. It's kind of weird how it just fell off their pants. But hey, you know, whatever works. So... 
could go ahead and say... Yeah, that works pretty alright. Actually, the first time she's flubbed a grenade in a very long time. There we go. Got that. Let's move her up to here. This guy's gonna... Uh, let's... let's have him take a quick peek around here, just make sure everything's alright. As far as the car goes, yeah. As you can see, there's nothing really around the car at the moment. So he's just here to make sure nothing's coming out of the door or running back in. Uh, this guy's going to go over here to get his friends back up. And if anything comes close, he's got a shot, so we're good to go. Actually, you know what? Go ahead and uh, take a shot here. So, a uh, weird, uh, weird little bug that's occasionally helpful. If you fire one tile within the door, sometimes the shots will actually penetrate the door. So it's worth doing. Let's see, alien biology is different from humans, so some gas may not work on aliens. This is true. It is exactly a point that they make several times, but uh, uh, but yeah. So as, as far as all the stun stuff goes, it's all generally the same. They're just more resistant to different types of it. Okay, Eric Nielsen is not in great shape and is panicked. I don't suppose you can medicate him. You might be able to medicate, but it may not be a good idea. You deal with this one. At the very least, you can go ahead and suppress him. Yeah, sometimes the animations get a little bit jittery, but whatever. Uh, tell you what. You go here, you just burst fire vaguely in his direction. Oh, well. Eric's not coming back. <laughs> God, I swear, those, uh, those SMGs are cursed. There's not a single time I've sent somebody out with an SMG and then come back alive. So, okay. She's going to go ahead and try to zappy-zap this guy. Do you have enough points for this? No, you don't. Zippy, 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 zip. That thing's not getting through the shield at all. As I guess could be expected. This range is beyond subpar. Okay, you need to run this way, though. Preferably, yeah, just run in here. So yeah, she's got armor. I'm pretty sure she'll be fine. Right, he's going to burst fire on the off chance that somehow this will help. You know, like It's hitting him. It's just bouncing right off. They've got about 200, I think, health on their shields. You just keep plinking at this door. Eventually this will break the door and also cause them to retreat farther in, which is also helpful. Bring more vehicles. You can only bring one. That's the only thing that'll fit on the dropship. But they've got a scion here, so it's worth capturing a scion for sure. Uh, that's what those uh, circular things are that keep happening. Heck, you know what might be an idea? This is very little reason I can't just long range plink with my little car here. Get suppressed, son! There we go. You're all well and suppressed like. I was hoping he'd face the other direction, but this works out all the same. Just keep pew-pewing him until his shield breaks eventually. I know, it's not ideal, but eventually it'll do something. Uh, let's have you do a little pew-pew. And actually put that minigun down, and remember to re actually pick it up this time. Go in here and play defense. Which just leaves you to pretend your gun's gonna hurt this guy. So that's the cool thing. Like, you have, at, at the very start of the game, you're basically shown these things, and it's like, okay, they're coming in with light rifles right at the very start of the game. You have nothing as far as stun options go, except for getting lucky with a shotgun. So, shotguns do 50% stun damage, so it's just a matter of which shot ends up doing what. It's just basically a thing, like, if you hit with red damage, they won't just die. If you hit with blue, they end up surviving. So, it's one of those things, but... Any dang ways, so... Pew pew pew. So yeah, they come in with those right off the bat, and if you manage to get them in the back, like, their shield does not work from the back. Which is why I'm trying to get them to circle around to different directions here. 
But yeah, it seems like even in that case, his, uh, his armor is just absorbing this. So I'm gonna try for a stun nade after this. That one's on commission. That one should still be able to fire. Good. So he's just gonna sit there. Now you need to go get these guys back up, because we need more numbers. Yep. So yeah, if you use a med kit on an unconscious guy to come back. Except, yeah, the same score rule applies. There, he's there. This guy needs a weapon. I want to drop this thing, but I know that if I drop it, there's a bug in the game that will essentially cause him not to get it back. Okay, let's have you move up here. It's gonna feel really, really, really stupid when it turns out that there's a bunch of guys right over here. I'm just assuming they're not there. Just so you know. Right, I'm gonna keep firing this thing. Yeah, there we go. So it finally gets through now, so the pistol should be able to finish him off next round. So, it, so yeah, all of the firing and plinking off, it's not for nothing. Like, it will actually cause their armor to break down, and will eventually get through. You know. There's a reason. There's a reason all this. Okay, one guy with a medkit inside of the panic. Fair enough. Load, take some shots. And it's still bouncing off him. Right, so we need to break it down even further. Keep firing, Mr. Carr. I believe in you. We believe in your damage. Maybe we don't. I'm starting to not believe in his damage. Friggin' high-tech Star Trek shield bullcrap. <laughs> okay, you take a burst at this guy. Duck back into cover. Alright. Yeah, how's her armor holding up? Because it feels like she's doing pretty alright. What's your chuck range? That's at 32 at the moment. Need what to fire? 30. Come over here, you're gonna go chuck a lightning grenade at this guy. He's one of the better ones. I, I'm pretty sure he's not gonna be worth the effort, to be honest. <clears throat> Why do you move the car closer? If I move closer, uh, A, they're gonna start taking shots from the door because he's just far enough away at the moment, and I really only want one of those shots to hit. So I'm trying to take little blinky shots here, try and wear down his armor somewhat. All right. Who's ready for lightning? Oh, nice job, idiot. Well, that thing was very expensive. Thank you for missing. That thing's still suppressed. So light damage seems to be getting through now. And I would like to be able to move Greenwich out of here, because that shield of hers is not holding up anymore. But not a whole lot I can do there. Right, so res him. Res him. Can you look in his direction and res him, please? Thank you. Why is that... Did they die? Why did that one die? Some weirdness. Okay, whatever. Whatever, whichever one that one is, I guess they died. Oh, that's probably because it's a raid. Okay, that you know that might explain some things. Neutron clips, neutron cannons, neutron grenade. It's fine. You just stick to your shotgun. I'm sure that stuff's amazing, but I'm not going to use it. So all the like super amazing energy weapons and everything else, they've all got weird limitations on them. So it, it seems like a lot of times they do a crap load of damage. Like in one case, there was one that was like a cannon that did some 300 something damage, and and it like only worked on Tuesdays or some bull crap. Like it just would not function under a lot of circumstances. Okay, got just enough to make this happen. Please work. Really. Okay, that's not great. That's not great at all. We might end up losing Greenwich. Which I think I'm gonna have Mr. Shotman over here to handle this situation. Wait, who do you see? You know, it's the same guy. Hang it. 
Can you set this chuckle bucket on fire, please? Just do something about this. Hopefully that doesn't involve setting your own people on fire. Nope. Just managed to miraculously hit every tile except for him. You, sir, are a walking miracle, I must say. Yeah, if we don't capture him, whatever. I don't. At this point, it's getting to be too much with this guy. Right. We get back to business. You pick up your stuff. This is not what I wanted. At this point, yeah, I will move the car closer because I'm not concerned about losing... I, I'm not concerned about losing the car. I'm not concerned about knocking this guy at, down. So there we go. He's down. There's a train car to block uh, fire from the door. Hopefully nothing comes out of the door right now. I think that's everything outside dealt with. 6% seems low to hit. And I have had entire fights where I've relied on 1% hits the entire time. Don't even worry about it. It's uh, it's one of those ones where you're having so many shots flying out that it's kind of realistic hit percentages. I mean, if you want to hear about uh, depressing accuracy, <laughs> if uh, so, as far as musket fire uh, during the early Age of Firearms and stuff like that, wait, like uh, during the Napoleon, uh, well, actually specifically during the Napoleonic era, apparently, they later on and they they later went on and did some analysis. Because they thought, like, oh yeah, you know, we're firing so many things, we're definitely hitting. You know, this is such an effective strategy. And then they go by and, like, they actually look through the numbers later. And the actual odd, like, the actual hit odds for each of their shots were something like 0.1%. It's just they were firing so many shots that stuff died eventually. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's really something right there. That's when you know that you've maybe got something very ineffective on your hands. Now... Yeah, that shield's running low. It looks like their shields have been upgraded. Uh, so, yeah, at this point, their shields show 300. So, yeah, he's going to be going ahead and dropping them a little bit of a UPS package here. So, we'll do that. Uh, sh I'll go ahead and see if this guy is carrying anything. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have a shield anymore. He does have a st an advanced stun. And as much as I want that thing... Well, actually... You can just carry both these things. As much as I want to use that, or rather, as much as I want to research that stun, I think, or rather, use it to mass produce things, I think we're going to have a better thing just going and chucking it inside here. Because that's that same uh, stun gas they were using on us earlier. You run up. You just, it, just embrace regret. <laughs> You've somehow managed to miss every single shot this entire time. And you were previously one of our top snipers, so yeah. Let that sink in for a moment. Uh, is Mr. Shotgun? Yeah, you are still here. You go this way. I, I was really excited about the shotgun until I noticed that it had two shots. Less excited about the shotgun. Let's see. You don't have that number, though? True. 6%, six, 1%, six whatever. It's doable. The um, thing is, for most of the rapid-fire weapons, when it says 1%, it means to actually hit what you're aiming at. Most times, they will still do like a bit of a circular area, like a bit of an AoE fire. So the in each individual shot may have 1% chance to hit, but you know, you're still going to hit everything in the area. Like in the case of this door, I'm going ahead and, like let's say, it's 12% to hit. It'll still end up hitting the entirety of the door. So you can think of it in relatively realistic terms that way. In terms of what's a decent hit percentage. Uh, and right now I'm just trying to wear down the door. Since I'd ideally like to breach through that thing. So you're going to go here, you're going to park yourself there, and you are going to assist in that process. Mr. Shotgun is going to go around the side. Get ready to intercept anybody coming out. Uh, Green Witch, you're going to be right behind, providing support. So, there we go probably switch over to this thing on burst fire. Okay. Mr. Barrow's here. You're also going to join in on this, but I will be having you change positions next round. 
Now you are going to go play defense over here. You're going to get ready as a hopeful stun finisher, maybe. And you're going to go get ready to get going with that door key. Yep. So yeah, that, this is what I love about X Division, though. Like, you, you can have the entire map completely on fire by the end of it, just from how much chaos has been going on. Like, in the original, it was always either, like, it was always just whoever shot first tended to win. In this one, they tend to survive more often, and it's just outright chaos in terms of, like, you don't want that one guy over there to get a single shot off. So you're going and, you know, burning down the entire zip code and launching, like, 15 rockets into there. It's like, I just don't want that guy to ever move in a situation. Alright, this guy's shield will hold up to anything that this thing fires. So we're going to park you right here. Uh, actually, yeah, there we go. So we'll be like this. We're going to go here. He decides to go over here. You are going to fire at the door. Just to use up the last of your shots. Go over this way. You're going to go fire at the door just for the hell of it. He unfortunately suppressed him, so he's going to lose half his units next round. Good, you just keep firing. Okay. Let's get our third guy in here. Yeah, the, uh, the alien shields are invisible, by the way. One of their uh, little benefits. Can you make it here? Yes, you can. Alright, good enough. That seems good to go. If we end up getting through this with only one casualty, that'll be pretty darn alright. Thing is, yeah, our, our casualty, your casualty rates in general in this one are pretty high. Like he was suppressed, same for this one. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that thing's got one shot left in it. You stand up. You go here. Uh, this guy's going to go in, preps to chuck some fire in there as a last resort. Ideally, I'd like to save the systems inside, but worst case scenario, if we have to set it all on fire, we will. You go here. You set the timer for six rounds. And get ready, and then you... are actually going to go over here, squat, get ready to fire. Ooh, that guy just got friggin' rocked. Okay, and we didn't even get any suppressions out of that. Freaking door reminds me of the swatting trend. It's not far off. <laughs> okay, let's see. Take a couple shots at this door. If by any chance it's that close to breaking. Yeah, no, that's just gonna plank off. This shotgun's got almost no penetration on it. Okay. Alright, take your final shot. I love this theme so much. Okay, now you're gonna back off here, you. I go here, see about chucking this thing over this way. All right, and now we're gonna need to get out of here. So those two are relatively safe. Mm, I don't want her to fire. Don't want him to fire. You know what? Uh, Send you back up here. So I basically I just don't want her to accidentally friendly fire. By the way, if you're wondering on this music in the background, this is all from my uh, Vagrant story. God, that game has some amazing music. So yeah, if we chuck a grenade in here, by the way. Like, if we do one of these, we can get it inside without firing outside. So you can't actually chuck them under the door. Speaking of the whole swatting thing. Okay, so we've got that. This will take 52 to fire. Alright, I'm gonna have her chuck this in next round. 
because I need these guys out of the way. Uh, there's a Scion in there that I want to capture. But that's fine, your shots are going to do next to nothing. He's going to hurt himself doing that. You're concerned about the car getting destroyed? Not really. Uh, so basically when it... Oof, you know what? Oh crap, this also landed in the one spot that I can't get to it too. Uh, okay, um... Fifty-seven percent. You get yourself out of here. Or at least as far as you can. This thing, it might blow up next round. I, I, I lost track. Please get it. Nope, didn't do it. Oof. Okay, so apparently stun grenades can cause C4 to explode. That's good to know. Um, anyway, so those guys, if they decide to come out, are hopefully getting stunned. These guys... Probably stunned that went so poorly. Uh, you know what? You need cover. So you run back here. You run back... Actually, you run over here. Yeah, we lost a guy, but... Not much we can do about that. Uh, he wasn't our shock gun guy, so I'm not too concerned. Just in case they make it out, let's stick Mr. Stunman over here and let's fire some suppression down in there. It's fine. Even if I suppress my own guys, at least they're kneeling. Do you need to pay if they died? Uh, thankfully, this is the 70s, so I guess people are just less concerned about that kind of thing. <laughs> That's the only way I can put it. You don't, but you probably should. There's a memorial, though. I guess we gotta pay to put the plaque on there. Uh, yeah, there's a decent chance that they just retreated out of here. That's what I'm gonna do in order to not waste that stun. Ah, he doesn't even have a thing. Okay. They might decide to run out and attack the car if he's there. Uh, this guy should be fine right here. Okay. I think that'll be our turn. Okay. Everything about... What the dick? You tricky bastard. Where do you come from? Okay, well, okay, how about all you useful folks don't panic? That might be an idea, too. Thanks for letting me know about that car. You see him. You see that guy over there. Nothing you can do about that. This guy is somewhere, probably in the corner right now. Move you this way. Yeah, and I know my car ammo is empty. It's it's all wasted and stuff. All right, not much we can do this round. So I need to deal with that guy out there. Let's have you move over here. Sit down for a second. I'll get your pistol for a moment. Swap these around. There we go. So she should use her uh, uh, plasma rifle at this point. This guy's going to stand here. Hopefully they'll get close. Anyway. Yeah, mostly I wanted to use that car to find out if he's over here. Yeah, so that guy's right there. Can you snipe him? No, it's out of range for her. This guy might be able to burn him, though. Yep. Perfect. Since cover gone. Do a little bit of snipey snipes. Alright, just bouncing off a shield, whatever. Use this guy for cover. And yeah, you're just gonna stand here watching.
It's fine. It's perfectly fine. Uh, technically speaking, we don't have to deal with him. Now, if we go in and get the Scion out of there, uh, that'll work out just fine, too. This guy's out of shots and everything. Why don't you go maybe pick up this guy's shotgun? I know it's not a safe spot for you to be in, but just do it, okay? Alright. Also, by the way, these, if you're wondering what the deal is with these, if you step on them, uh, they're basically uh, folks that are all infected and everything. So if you step on them, they end up hurting your dudes. So no odds of hitting, but should probably go for it. 2%. Please don't wander too far. Okay. Here we go. Can't make it back in there. Can you make it somewhere? You can make it right there. It's not ideal. But if they, you know, if they run forward, that'll end up being beneficial. Okay. Um, you hit this guy by chance? No. Going for a flank. Again, that's still fine, actually. Scout car, scout. Still there. Alright. This guy's new job will be to try and outflank the flanker here. Car will be here to take hits. So we got that guy over there, that's fine. That will probably cause him to panic and run down this way. We'll get him trapped in this building, which will mean you can probably go and lay him down a little bit. Should also participate in that project. This should leave you open to go and deal with this nonsense. So he just hopefully needs a single shot on that uh, Cesian in there. Every time he's doing a psionic crap, it's uh, the length's up a little bit farther. Oh well, oh well, oh well. We'll see what we see. Yeah, so he can't move now. Mr. Shotman. Please run down this way. Thank you for not dying. Okay, so he's, we know he's got an HMG. It's good to know. There, yeah. So let's try to squeeze him on up this way. Yeah, th these two are just going to chase him away. Even if we don't have to... We don't necessarily have to beat him. If we hold the UFO after five turns, it's basically done anyway. It's not basically done. That's literally a win condition. This friggin' gas is taking forever to go away, though. Alright. He's still running. That's fine. He just wants to be out of sight. Okay. He's gonna stay right there. Oh, you know what? Hang on. Uh, one second. Actually, about 30 seconds. I'm gonna go check on the thing. Right back.
So yeah, I'm here, uh, just, uh, kind of getting a little bit loud on this end. So these guys getting ready to go in. I'll stack up, hopefully they're covered by the minigunner here. In fact, I might even have her run up this way. It's, it's a little bit risky to have her do this, but then she might be able to go in and offer a little bit of support. Okay, and they've got a pilot in there, too, or that's a navigator, I think. Okay. Step forward. It's just out of range. If I can... Hmm. Use him for cover. He can't move. She can't really do much useful. Actually, no, she can... Still get a burst off at least. Yeah, so that's just gonna bounce off his shield for the moment. And then she can probably still run out after all that. Yep. Do what they do. Pew pew with that thing, of course. Oh wow, that just broke his shield. Okay. That's not great. That guy's just gonna hide off onto the side. Hmm. Thing is, he's being pretty smart here. If I can't really get around to his sides. Okay, I think I'm out of shock nades. No, you still have one. I go for a shock. Oh come on! Really? Really? You fall for on the one tile and knocks two guys unconscious? Are you serious right now? <sighs> I swear, the game has some hidden algorithm in the background. <laughs> like, it, yeah, it'll be real funny if it ends up knocking out exactly everyone. Ugh, that's irritating. Okay, um... Tell you what. We go here. Get ready to hopefully fire on in there. We've completely lost eyes on that guy at this point, but I'm fine with that. Okay. Comes by, we'll probably see it. So we have two guys to deal with over here. Double KO thing's annoying, but we at least have a means of dealing with it. How about you don't fire? Over here, you help this guy back up. It feels like at this point their shields have been upgraded. Because I, I almost want to say, like, they, the way that they used to function from the side, where it's 50% block, that they function that way from the back, too. But you can't really say for sure. Now, just in case this guy's going all the way around... So have you go ahead and uh, take a quick peek out this door. Because he could potentially be going all the way around here. In fact, I might even have the scout car go after him. Okay, no, he's just right there. It's fine. So he'll just run off again. Apparently he doesn't realize the non-threatening situation there. Okay, come on, please don't fire, please don't fire, please don't fire. Okay, good. It's fine. Can you get ammo supply during the fight? No, you can't. Uh, you just kind of got to bring everything along. Usually the go-to strategy for that is just to load up one guy with as much ammunition as you can carry. Like to the point where they can't even move anymore and just dump everything in the helicopter. It's kind of an uh, extra cop-out. Funnily enough, it's actually a feature that they did uh, that they did decide to add in for uh, Xenonauts 2. Uh, where you'd basically have a little bit of a box that you'd be able to go use. It's actually something that they're adding into, uh, what's it called? Uh, da, da, da. Sorry for being a little bit spacey on that one. Uh, what the hell is it called again? Uh, Phoenix Point. There we go. We're going to go ahead and revive this guy and get the hell out of there. Friggin' pew pew pistols all I got left. Fact, let's do this. Take your final shot. There we go. Everybody's suppressed. 
That guy will now retreat into the back. Hopefully, or I forget to bring her back. Okay, cool. That's smart. That car seems less useful than personal. It's free. You literally just get a dedicated slot to your car. Uh, previously, uh, these things used to take two slots, uh, for the sake of context. So yeah, no, previously you could bring six guys in a car, which was, yeah, that was pretty worthless. Alright, that guy's panicking. Ah, dang. Okay. So they've actually got three guys in here. Uh, that guy dropped his weapon for some reason. So we're going to have to go ahead, get, go ahead and get the hell out of here. No, come on. No, 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 no. Stop with all that. Trying to not have all that crap happen, thank you. Okay. You go back here. Yeah, the team's in pretty rough shape at the moment. Uh, probably what I, what I want to do... Have Greenwich run up here, pick up that minigun. I mean, she's basically been a dedicated minigunner this entire time. Have her reload the thing. Oh, and wonderful. She's completely exposed. Okay, let's see what happens. That guy runs away. Hopefully nobody else does anything. Please don't do anything. Can use dead alien weapons? Yes, you can. You absolutely can do that. We're going to load that minigun. It's just, yeah, their things, uh, their plasmas and everything, most of them can't be reloaded. Okay, what do you see? How do you see it? Interesting that you could see him from there, but not... whatever. Alright. On top of another thing, due to a weird bug in the original game, I actually don't want to go and drop any equipment. Because if I drop any of my things that I've put together or anything, uh, there's a pretty decent chance we're not getting it back. So, a lot of those are... A lot of the equipment these guys are carrying are, quite frankly, more uh, more uh, valuable than the actual individual themselves. Uh, the car could potentially be easily destroyed, but they didn't come in with the right weapons for it. Uh, so Plasma does about 20 to 30. Uh, Health-wise, it's got 160, so it's reasonably durable against um, some energy and ballistic. Uh, chemical things, I believe, ruin it completely, and... Um, What's it? Uh, uh, EMP will usually just one-shot the thing. This guy's still gonna sit there. Okay, come on, please. Good. Don't even care. Get bent. See, this is why I previously was running miniguns on everybody. I'm trying to go for captures and things like that, but I really might just mass-produce a bunch of miniguns and go for that. Yeah, this guy's trying to crawl up our bunghole here. Super Cop's on his way to deal with it, though. Uh, okay. Mr. Shoddy Man. Here to deal with that. Mr. Carr, get ready to add pressure to that situation. Right, so he's probably hiding right back here. Hmm. Okay. Dickery! Okay. That is some serious bullcrap right there that they all got their reactions at the same time, but whatever. We know where they are. Therefore, they can suck it. Uh, we lost a corporal, though. Let's see how, how much damage that did to him. One, one guy's suppressed. Nobody's down from that. So I'm going to put him right here, I'm going to try to run him around into here, and then use him to kind of leverage that situation. Right now, miniguns are the only thing I have with enough stopping power to, to really do any significant damage. He's right there. Go for a bit of a burst. Okay. 
Excellent. So that thing exploded, that guy died. Good. So that leaves one guy left in the UFO. Like, even this guy, if if he were to be at com completely full points, point blank, just rail on that guy with a shotgun, which, by the way, those things take 10 AP to fire, so they can fire a whole lot in a single round. Also, it's very likely we're getting stuck, snuck up on here. So they can fire a lot of times in one round, but even then, it's just not going to be enough in most situations. Okay. Shotgun guy's running away. 50... If you're wondering uh, how the reaction system works, by the way, it's basically your score tested against their score, except your score is basically uh, however many... Uh, it's um, scaled to how many uh, turn units you have left, and same goes for that. Right. Not seeing any bodies showing up there, but I also don't have anyone on the side. And that's almost everything I can do. Let's see, is this guy over here someplace? Where do you see him? He's right there. Hopefully he'll run. Yeah, there we go. Why he's afraid of a completely unarmed car is anyone's guess. Though I guess they never run out of ammo, so they don't understand the concept. So fine, fair enough. Let's have the car run around and stare angrily through a window or something. Where is he now? He's over there. Some Looney Tunes crap right there, for real. Okay. Uh, he's probably in the back at this point. So I'm gonna have Flame Fly go right there. I'm gonna have Green Witch run up here. The reason that they're avoiding all these is, like I said, they take uh, terrain damage if they end up stepping on any of these buddies. It's okay. You go back and pick up your shoddy, sir and pretend that you'll ever be useful. It's actually funny, he was pretty useful early on in the fight. But at this point, there's just not really much for him to do. Blood Bowl 2? Yes, that mess is pretty awesome. I just love the concepts. Everything about that game is just amazing. There you go. See? They took one shot, and they're fine. They can still... They can take a almost point-blank range uh, thing from that. Okay, here. Can we 100% this? Yes. 131%. There we go. That'll set him on fire. These guys are just going to sit here and watch. Either runs out and uh, tries to fight, hopefully gets stunned, or he just sits there and fries like a little friggin' snail. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Either option's okay with me. We just sit here and end turns over and over until they're done. Then, again, this guy might be carrying a stun on him. Are you carrying a shield? Oh, I'm really tempted, because that guy's... Ah, okay, fine, fine. Temptation ensues. This, like this. Can you carry this? Good, don't. This is going to be such a bad idea. As soon as this fire disappears, these guys are going to go run in there. Can't help but notice that we haven't heard from this guy in a while. I think he ran up the stairs. Or no, he's right there. Okay, uh, might be unnecessarily risky, but screw it. We're going to go in there and try to deal with him. Not like you're, you've got anything better to do. Get him, get him, get him, come on, flame fly, react, 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 what are you doing? Good lord, man, really? The hell is that embarrassing bullcrap? Like, what? React? I don't want to react. Also, yeah, that thing just completely ate it. It's fine. There we go. It is almost dead. And that guy's still there. Safe place for you. Uh, I think he might be able to sneak up this way. Or just stick right there. And we'll go ahead and have the car leave. Alright, 
Is he going to go for the same risky maneuver again? Uh, honestly, I don't know much enough about it to have an exact favorite. Oh, please no. This is probably doing absolutely nothing. I'm lying if I said I wasn't at least a little bit annoyed by this. Might be able to get around to his side and pew pew him in the face. Okay. Oh, that's such a bad idea. Why am I doing it? Yeah, the one one or both of them is toast now. Or no, he's using ballistic. It's just bouncing off of armor. Nice. Okay. All right. Let's do it. We tried. Where'd he go? Versus 28. You tried. And checkmate. <laughs> okay, so that's that. Now we just need to survive five turns. Oh, never mind, you're gonna die now. Okay. Good to know. Um, yeah, you go here, Mr. Carr. Go ahead and hide over here. And yeah, now as long as we last five turns. Okay. Anything you guys want to pick up from here? Probably not. Grains. Weirdly enough, if I pick up their stuff, then I don't get to use it for research later. It's kind of funky in that way. Yeah, so she's completely out of ammo anyway. Here, you go here someplace. I still even haven't explored the entire map. This is just the one guy, but who cares? That feature, by the way, I really hope they get rid of in uh, Xenonauts 2. So if you go to a place and you haven't explored it yet, and it basically like suddenly there's something in your way, it will automatically try to repath in a completely different direction. And every single time that has triggered so far, it's either caused something similar to, or actually has caused somebody to die. So I really hope that feature is not there anymore. Damage. I want to say there's a medkit right here or something. I mean, he's going to be fine one way or another. We're winning this before his time runs out. They'd have to come in here with a flippin' cannon in order for anything to happen. There we go. We won it. So Green Witch got awarded for participation in 10 missions. So she's... Holy crap, accuracy plus 10? Crap, man. Alright, yeah, Eric we got frickin' vaporized, lost to an emu, shame about him. Uh, we got Private he Terra here, did alright. Flamefly is a lieutenant now, good. We got a Wraith Soldier, that's a new one. Other than that, we got a bunch of resources. Did we get... yeah, Medium Scout Data Core, I think. I think that'll allow us to make another airplane, so that's good. And alright, so there we go. Uh, all good to go here. Yeah, we... We lost three. It's, it's unfortunate, but that's life. Okay. So, there's that. We got two new researchers out of it. And yeah, I'm going to have to call it for today then. So, thank you for uh, showing up. Ooh, actually corrected our income situation pretty severely there. I think we got like 30 grand up out of that. But anyway, so, I uh, hope it was amusing. Have a good one, and take care.